This programme is an Orange Bag Media production. My name is Jim Briotti, and this is my 99th 24 hour or longer race. This is Barcelona, 1.6 million people call this their home. If you extend that out to the metropolitan area, then it's over 5 million sold. Great architecture everywhere you look. History is staring back at you. Lots of celebrations in this area, very traditional. This weekend in Grenoia is the Fiesta Mayor. This celebrates dualism. The devil of Grenola is in attendance. Competition is absolutely at the heart of this area. The people love it. Many different sporting teams are based here. Think of the likes of FC Barcelona, of course. But our sporting heart this weekend is at the circuit of Barcelona, Catalonia for the Hancock 24 Hours of Barcelona. We are in Spain. We are at the beautiful circuit of uh, Catalonia. And it's the last race for the European Championship, the fifth and the last race. It's going to be an exciting race, I can tell you already. We've seen a healthy battle for many seasons between the Red Camel team and the NKKP racing entry. For this race, both teams are sharing the same car. Well, we couldn't find the right lineup, so uh, we decided to join forces with our biggest competitor, Evo. And uh, we're very much looking forward to start this race uh, with Red Camel Jordans and see how far we can get uh, if the two biggest competitors uh, work together in one car. The weekend didn't start well for Aqib for sure. In the pre-free uh, free practice the engine was too hot, so we decided to change the engine and then start at the back. That was a better solution, we thought. The team couldn't repair the car in time for qualifying, but everyone else went out to set their time for their position on the grid. Yeah, it was a good quality for us. Uh, of course, it had to be expected that uh, I do the pole, uh, but uh, with a Gen 1 car and uh, being in a pro arm uh, car, we, we had a bit of a disadvantage on performance, so really happy to, to do the pole. Yeah, the, the qualifying was uh, pretty good for us, so I managed to put uh, the car on pole position in the TCR class, and the TCE, uh, we are on P3, so I'm really looking forward to the race now. This track uh, suits a lot uh, to the uh, fast cars, which are straight line, uh, who got straight line speed, and uh, the cars which are standing now in the front row got a little bit more horsepower uh, than we have. So I'm quite happy because the qualifying itself was a quite close, uh, close fight. So it's good for us to be on pole. The, the setup of the cars, the ball was was very balanced, and finally we. We found, we, we arrived to do the, the, the first, uh, the pole position. Well, I drove the 12 hour of Spa, um, but this is my first 24 hour race. Um, first time in the car, so we, I didn't do so many laps in the car, but at the moment I feel confident in the car, so yeah, I was able to, to put the pole. It was all right. It was uh, one of those laps where you get out, everything feels good. The car was super good. Um, didn't get a lot of laps in, so we didn't really know exactly where to to be with the new tires, but we were pretty good. Um, so um, now we're looking forward to the race now. While the spectators enjoy the grid walk, where do the drivers see themselves in 24 hours time? It's time for the team with a pole. So um, yeah, the team is uh, very successful in this uh, in this series, uh, even though they are not starting always in the front row. Um, so let's see what we can do now in the start. The yeah, problem is only the, the temperature. If the car is, uh, I think, 70, 70 grad, it's very hot. I think everyone in TG3 has the potential car of winning here. And like I said, it's all about being safe. And if you are unlucky and you have a technical difficulty, it's pretty much race over. 
Every GT3 championship now is so competitive that if you lose a lap, you might as well quit. GTs have started their warm-up lap. The Porsche Laureate 911 has problems leaving the starting grid. The cars behind the number 911 need to go by, and the track marshals have to push Jean-Francois Demorge off the track. Um, we got an um, electronic problem with a captor. Um, that, that's, that was right on the dashboard that the, the driver was on the first to the first speed, but in real he was in the sixth, so that damaged the clash. The Porsche Lorian pushed back into the pit box as the TCE Series and GT Series cars complete their second warm-up lap. It's the 31st of August 2019, 12 noon, we're ready to start the GT cars in the Hankook 24 Hours of Barcelona. The field fans out towards the first quarter. The number 10 Hofer Mercedes on the right of screen. The number 11 Red Ferrari on the left. Trying to gain positions in the first few metres of the race. The red Bohemia Energy entry has to fall back. The white and red Hoffer Mercedes AMG claiming two positions, now fourth overall. It was great. I mean, it was exactly what I wanted. I mean, I, when you are at the grid and the, the light, just uh, the, the red goes off and you are in your race, you know why you're here this weekend. It is just amazing. It's a fantastic moment. The field is getting up to pace and a collision. There were the Porsche Cup cars going very slow and I had my, my colleagues behind me from the GT4 class. I had to go for the gap and in uh, turn three, a Porsche hit me on the right side. I had a spin and then he hit me a second time. Now our rear axle is gone. The Hoffer team will take about three hours to repair the car. It's worse for the Orchid, number 917 Porsche. We can't repair it. It's a major damage in the front and right. We have to replace, the body has been opened so we can't replace it. All the teams, the first time here at the Craventic 24, they did a great job and they were expecting really, they were giving everything they could. They made a major work and I'd like to thank them for what they did. Electrical problems for Jim Briodi, he needs to part the 717 Mark II. Meanwhile, for the 21st time in history, the TCR cars start their 24 hours of Barcelona. Positions being gained and lost, but Eric Yanis in the RTR Projects 224 hasn't got a good start. His crossbow started second, but before the field even reached the first corner, he's down to fourth. This brings the number 188 AC Motorsport TCR car up to third. Further down the TCE field, the Holmgard 102 Volkswagen leaving space between them and the other competitors. I was saving the car. Don't get any uh, damage on the car, so we can uh, hold the uh, whole race. So just was a little bit passive, so don't get any uh, um, crashes or something like that. At the end of the first lap, 701 in the pit lane, and it's a short stop. We had to stop by the pit to close the doors because it was just it opened in two, in two occasions, and uh, the stint was great at the beginning. Despite this problem, I mean, it was pretty difficult to get back to the rhythm and with a good pass, but it was very, very hot. In that early afternoon heat, the Bohemia Energy Ferrari is fighting for position with the 24 from GPX Racing. It was quite good, uh, it was really hot, and the car was working really well, but uh, it will be a long race. Meanwhile, the number 29 Renault RS01 had a brand new engine because of overheating, now back in the pit. The race started, we could not test the car, so we did not know if this problem has solved. So after, say, 15 minutes, the problem started again, and we decided to get the car in, not to damage the engine too much, and try to change the radiator and the thermostat. Leaders in the GT division, still less than a second apart, the third place car just coming out the final corner. We were battling actually with, we were in P3, battling with P1 and P2, but they were a lap uh, uh, in front of us, so we decided to let them go, not to have a stupid race. TCE division has a new leader. It's the Baz Kooten prepared top car sport number 131. Yes, that was good. Uh, the girls were pulling quite quite uh, quite fast, but then they ran out of tires and we managed to take the lead in the TCR class. Remember the Porsche Lorient 911 couldn't start the race? Well, 
they've joined in now and they still claim to have a chance. We still have 23 hours, so we will see uh, what happened. <laughs> Never say that we lost before uh, to finish the, the race. There is 23 hours, so a lot of things can happen during the night, early in the morning. Red Camel team got a problem shifting gears. The gear shift up, upwards uh, didn't function anymore. It was loose, so Evo had to run all the way to pit box 43, where Kooten is with our own car, an NKPP car, get our own steering wheel, running back, giving me the steering wheel so I could get in with our own steering wheel. Uh, so it's actually this race is a combination of uh, Red Camel and KPP. It's getting really hot in the cars. I had some problem, it was too hot. We had, uh, I mean, I had water to drink, but it was uh, very difficult to, to keep focused. And not only people suffering. We had a, a hot temperature signal and uh, I tried to cool it down, so I uh, slowed down a little bit. But uh, yeah, it didn't uh, uh, still race till uh, it was overheated. We came in, just stopped, looked at it, and after it, it didn't start again. The, uh, yeah, the gearbox. We cannot repair it. Mathieu Dutre had five laps left in his stint when it became nearly impossible to steer the car. I don't know, I was on the first, uh, on the first break on the straight line. I break and I block the, the rear uh, links wheel. And uh, after, uh, just with the steering wheel broken and yeah, it's the suspension broken, I think. A packed three hours of action. Some drivers not able to keep their car pointing in the right direction. Some cars already in the pit lane with big problems. Others have solved the problems and are back on the track. Good time to take a look at the standings. Three hours of racing completed, less than a second between the number 77 Lamborghini from Barwell Motorsport and the number 91 Porsche from Herbert. If they can keep that battle up for 21 more hours. Or will GPX Racing work their way forward from their current third position with the number 24 Porsche? In the TCE division, we started with SP3 cars and Paul and second. But the TCR cars now dominate the standings. The Autorama 112 is in the lead. They've already won three out of the four races this season. Season, and this fifth race of the season is starting well for them. The top car, number 131, is running second. The local Baporo entry in third in the division and, of course, in the TCR class. This is Endurance. Uh, for me, it's, uh, what, what's uh, about endurance races, it's unique. Uh, I think there's no series on the planet uh, well, you have this kind of 24 hours and 12 hour mix, so for, for us uh, it's, it's top. Huh? And amateurs have the chance, with a little bit of uh, support from some pros, uh, to drive in the overall top five, so uh, everything is really good. We're at the circuit de Barcelona Catalunya, one of the most like modern circuits in the world. It's actually a great feeling coming here. It's the first track I came to and went, wow. You walk into the paddock, you have this incredible grandstand, you've watched all the F1 races here and, and then your driver on the same track, that all those greats you used to watch, you know, have been on. So it's a great place, the fans are great and I love Barcelona itself, it's a great place to be. Here we, we organise the Formula One, MotoGP, Rallycross, there are Spanish GT Championship, there are a lot of races here and I think for all the motorsport drivers this is the, the most important it's really cool yeah um, fast corners uh, a lot of grip so yeah with new tires you can you can smash the car around <laughs> the track is good it's quite dirty compared to many other tracks off the line uh, I think the key here is to be very very safe um, and try not to spend too much time off the ideal line yeah really really nice uh, like a bit like Potimao with with no de deviation and yeah, very quick and very technical way, so it's a uh, great fun. The track is fantastic. I mean, it's a combination of slow and faster corners. Um, one of the nicest track in the calendar, and uh, yeah, I really like it. Love it, love it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it takes a lot of discipline. Um, actually, I really like it because there's, there's enough runoff room. If you make a mistake, you're okay, so good fun to drive. Compared to Dubai, this track is more difficult, is uh, more requiring for the driver, so I like it. 
I'm coming from the Nordschleife, which is completely different. So you have uh, 25 kilometers and you have a very long track with 100 cars and uh, this is completely different. With the Barcelona heat, this is a true endurance race in every sense of the word. The drivers need to take some time to recover after their stint. And whilst we're talking about recovery, the number 50 car that had the crash in the first lap has now rejoined. The crew very proud of themselves after fixing the rear axle and suspension. We had the uh, BMW experts here and uh, we discussed if it was uh, sensible to, to, uh, to change the parts. And they said it would be a uh, last of six hours maybe to repair the whole car. And uh, we tried, okay, if we put all our manpower on this car and, uh, and just change our, our um, box strategy for the other car, then we can work with everybody on this car. It was six hours of planned and we just uh, three hours. Experienced American driver Darren Law is new to the series and his first stint hasn't been the easiest. It's a tough steer because it's just so hot, you know, and uh, the track is greasy, so it's a lot of work. It's not like it just sticks and goes. You're constantly correcting the car, so it's a lot of work. Race leader Patrick Gajala picks up a puncture near to the end of his stint, brings the Lamborghini number 77 into the Barwell crew. They turn him around very quickly, meaning they can still fight for the lead with the number 91 Herbert Porsche. In that car, gentleman driver Ralph Bourne is doing a great job in the battle for the lead. Well, it's switching around, yes, the, the Lamborghini is very strong and uh, uh, he was faster than me, but I was lucky he had, he had a bunch and so I could overtake him back again. The team is looking for a little redemption from the disaster that struck the car last time out. Well, as we lost the car in Portimao on fire, so our target for this weekend is to finish. And to finish best position, that's the target. The Code 60 is out. It's the number 902 Webhead's car with Andreas Rydl in the gravel. Not seem to get the Porsche to start. We had a good position. We had P1 in qualifying. We were defending it. And then I had this yeah, accident, which was from my point of view, a classical race accident. I wanted to get in at turn four. And obviously the BMW didn't saw me and hit my car. Great job by the marshal to quickly get the car out of the gravel. It's trailing a little rubber, but there's no major damage. Finally, clouds have taken the edge off the bright sunshine as we get closer to the evening. A sigh of relief from all the drivers. It was absolutely hell. It was really hot. I remember last year that uh, I finished the last stint and I was not able to come on the podium. <laughs> so for me, the hot in Barcelona is always very hard. It's a problem, but it's it's the same for everybody. So you have to when you when you feel that it's too hot, you have to slow down a little bit to to recover your your spirits, and then it will be okay. The 34 Audi is setting a great pace for the A6 AM class in this endurance race. Uh, I think uh, the race is more and more getting to a sprint race. It's not a 24-hour endurance race. It is a sprint race. The main opposition for the car collection number 34 team for the season championship is the number 85 from CP Racing. But their race is not going according to plan. Uh, no, we're usually used to a pretty well set up car. We've got some issues going on with the car right now. We're not sure what it is. It was really good in testing, but it's been falling off a bit during practice and qualifying and the first part of the race. So we're not really sure mechanically what's going on, but uh, it doesn't seem like its usual self. A massive hit for the Red Camel number 101 Seat with the NKPP driver Harry Hildes behind the wheel. Harry was doing quite well and we were catching up with the competition again. Uh, catching up quite fast actually. And uh, But then in turn four, uh, uh, our car uh, with the rear left uh, tyre in turn four uh, got off, off track. And then your car spins to the right. And then there's a wall, and this is the result of uh, a car which uh, hits a wall uh, with 140 kilometers. As you can see behind us, this is it. Good news is Harry's walked away from the accident and hurt, but there'll be a long code 60 to clear it all up. That's our cue to look at the standings after seven hours of racing. As the hard-working marshals are doing their job, it's the Barwell Motorsport number 77 that holds the lead. 
Herbeth Motorsport, number 91 Porsche, second in the GT division. 47 second gap between first and second there. Third, the Porsche from GPX Racing, the number 24, but they're a lap off the race leaders. In the TCE division, the number 131 Top Car Sport Cooper by Baz Cooten Racing has a two lap lead. The crossbow from RTR Project, the T24, is running second and they lead the SP3 class. Third in TCE is the Vaporo number 135 Cupra. Uh, they've got another lap to make up, but they've got 17 hours to do it. We're at the circuit to Barcelona, Catalonia for the fifth race in the European leg of the Hankook 24 Hours Endurance Series. It's an important race. Not only because you have the race here in Barcelona and trophies for the race, but also it's the last race in the European Championship. So uh, the last chance for teams to get points. And after the race, we have a great championship party with great, great trophies. Um, so I think every team is doing his best to, to get the best points and the result. It depends also a little bit on the other cars, on the other um, cars in A6, especially also in 911 class. But if we take the win, we still are in a good position also maybe to take the overall championship. And yeah, let's see what happens after 24 hours. Being a series with many classes, each with their own points, means it matters what happens in every class of competition, not just the overall standings. Uh, you can see that uh, we uh, won four uh, races, uh, actually all of them, and uh, we have still no sure that we will win. Every championship hopeful has to keep an eye out as to what is happening in the whole field. If uh, the Mercedes with uh, number 85, uh, the C CP Racing, I think, if they will win in their category, we have to win five races in a row to be first. Uh, in the AMP championships, we have a pretty good uh, points lead in the A6 AMP, but it's still a race between us, the uh, 93 Porsche and the 34 car collection Audi. So it's, it's a race all the way down. Right, let's get back to racing. It's been a long code 60. The marshals have had to fix the tyre barriers, uh, but they and their machines are off track now, and so the race can continue where it left off. Not racing at the moment, the Zorg Ren Sport number 451. The team have worried faces. We had some electrical uh, problems. Um, there was not enough um, voltage on the battery, so the car stopped on the start-finish line and we had to recover the car into the pit lane. Uh, we changed the battery and um, checked the wiring and uh, yeah, that's, um, uh, I hope, uh, everything what we had to do. Uh, the car is running uh, fine again on uh, P2 in class, GT4. Let's uh, keep the fingers crossed. The number 91 Herbert Porsche has closed in on the Barwell 77 Lamborghini. The lead changes on the main straight as the Porsche goes by the Lamborghini. Still a tight battle though. Meanwhile, in the classes, the race can be a little more solitary. It was um, a very long uh, stint because it was code 60. It looked for me that I was the last. And so I had enough space to the front and in the back there was also no car. So I was driven by myself. After some help from Renault engineers, the number 29 RS01 from Akeep Vacher had tried their third attempt to get the race started. Still action in all of the classes, second in A3, the number 802 of Fun M team stranded on the track. Um, I was in a pool with uh, other cars and uh, suddenly um, some of the cars hit my right uh, rear and so I spun slightly. And afterwards, I've got the feeling that uh, something broke on the right side. So on the uh, left-hand quarters, it was a problem to go with uh, more speed in it. So I have to slow down and do my laps and do my laps. And, but um, as I see now, nothing uh, bigger damage happened. So I don't know. It's the accident between the Hoffa number 10 AMG and the Nordschleife of Peugeot 172 that's brought out the purple flags. So in turn four, I had an encounter with another car. I don't know uh, whose fault it is. We have to look at the videos, but we both went into the gravel. Then uh, I got pulled back and now I'm here. I'm a little, very little hurt at the, at the left hand, but nothing serious. 
and the car will be repaired. J'ai abordé le virage sur la droite, il n'y avait rien dans mon rétroviseur. J'ai pris le virage et la voiture de derrière m'a shooté la Mercedes. Thierry was on his line uh, to take a, a, a corner and uh, he don't see in the mirror uh, the Mercedes who come to, to jump him. And uh, the pilot of the Mercedes, imagine uh, Thierry uh, opens the door to jump him and he makes a mistake. It's common practice in the Hankook Pad 24-hour series by Kreventnik. The drivers involved in an incident will have a chat with each other to make sure there's no long-lasting hostile feelings. Apologies will be made. Obviously, the team still have work to do to get the cars back into the race. The damage of the car is uh, rear axle and front axle on the right side. You have also some suspension, you have also wheel is brake. And I think we need minimum uh, one hour to repair. The Nordschleife, a racing team, have their 172 Peugeot already in the garage, damaged from the accident that you've just seen. And now their second car, the Ligier, has a broken drive shaft, which the team needs to fix as well. The GT battle is still tight. Didn't expect to see Alfred Renard here this weekend. He is, and following the progress, of course, of the Herbeth number 91 car. Uh, I had a clash this weekend, so we did uh, Porsche Super Cup at Spa. And I arrived just a uh, few hours ago. So my brother and me, we are the team owners, and it's always important to, to, uh, yeah, to check everything, to get the whole team together, uh, and uh, to have a good um, feeling for everyone. Nearly midnight, how does Alfred assess the race? Yeah, it's really close to the Lamborghini and also to the Ferrari. I hope we can continue until the end and have a good fight with them. 12 hours completed. Here are the standings in GT and TCE. Once again, Barwell number 77 Lamborghini leads the race. They've got 25 seconds of an advantage over the series regulars of Herbeth Motorsports Porsche number 91. Their season competitors, the number 11 Bohemia Energy Ferrari, also now in the top three, although two laps behind the race leaders. In a testament to the speed and reliability of the TCE division runners, their leader, the top car number 131, has completed 310 laps. That's a lap more than the third place Porsche 991 class car. In their own category, the TCR class, the Swiss team have a four lap advantage over Paporo's number 135 Seat in second, and a lap further back is Autorama, the 112 car in third. This is Endurance. Uh, endurance is uh, good racing fun. Um, we uh, normally do the uh, uh, endurance race at the Nürburgring. That's our home track. But uh, traveling uh, to Kota or Dubai or to, uh, to Barcelona is uh, always a big uh, excitement. So um, we love to do that. The Kreventnik series has been going strong for 14 years. It's the perfect place for manufacturers to try new cars, even concept cars, in a competitive race environment. This race, it's the turn of KTM to bring something new. Normally, they bring their KTM Crossboard GT4s, but not this weekend. Yeah, this weekend we've got our two new concept cars, which are now called the KTM GTX with us. Um, this weekend is really just a proof of concept. Um, it's the first race we've ever done with the cars. We've done some testing over the year uh, with the car, and now we've just put it into the race to kind of see where it fits and where we want to go with it. And to be fair, it's gone pretty smoothly until now. New cars and also new teams. I normally driving in Germany, but uh, in the VLN, but we stopped that and uh, now we're going and looking for something else. So uh, we've done that 15 years and now we're going for something else. Yeah, we want to see something else because we are always running on the Nordschleife and um, so we want to try uh, what is going on here and um, yeah, that's it. So what is it that draws these teams to Kreventnik Racing? It's attractive for us because it's a, a level with, uh, where amateurs drive it like we have a place. It's uh, nice driving, uh, people are, are careful and we can use a lot of time of driving. So the Nordschleife, um, yeah, it's a little bit different from here. So it's a little bit easier to drive here. So the penalties and uh, the people are more friendly. <laughs> it seems that almost every race, the organizers are welcoming new drivers to the series. 
and their feelings are just like those from the team managers. It's well organized, uh, it has a friendly atmosphere, you know, a friendly paddock between the teams, etc., but still very competitive. Uh, you know, the, the percentage of amateur drivers is uh, quite high here, uh, but you know, they all want to, to compete and, uh, and win, so it's good fun. I'm still sort of split whether to focus on sprint racing or endurance racing. And endurance racing is uh, all about the atmosphere, the team, and the way how you drive the car together with your friends. So I love it. I mean, the team is great. Past midnight here, battle still going on in all of the classes here in Barcelona. And it's not just on the tarmac, mind you. Our eSports competition is being raced at the same time and still leading there is the Spanish MSI eSports team. Back in the real world, number 802 is pushed into the garage. They suddenly lost power and the engineers are having a hard time locating the cause of what they think is an electrical failure. The RTR number 224 crossboard team also have a problem to solve. Their car was pushed into the garage about an hour ago now. Well, I got unlucky because I was hit by Porsche into turn seven, I think. Uh, I got off the track to the gravel and when we found out the car was fine, I was continuing to the race, but probably the gravel was in the engine as well. So right now we're trying to find out whether it's the engine problem or what caused the engine problem. The Webheads 902 wins a class battle on the Porsche Laureate number 911 as problems arise for Core Oasis 717 Mark car. We had a, a pretty awkward accident uh, at midnight. Uh, Ricky was blinded by uh, cars behind him and uh, it just car snapped on him and he lost it and then uh, he hit the wall and the, we had chassis damage and the, the transaxle went a little bit sideways so we call it a day you know we cannot we cannot fix it here. Leading the field always seems effortless but that is rarely the case. I think the biggest difficulty here is uh, it's quite demanding physically. The track itself, there's very little time to relax. I find this more demanding than Spa 24 hours. And I've done that quite a few times now. Um, yeah, it's been very interesting. Um, the differential in speed with other cars is, is actually very interesting. You, you start reading the dynamic, you start fighting through the traffic with, with, uh, with your class fight that you're having. Uh, and you use the traffic obviously safely, but, but uh, it, it's very interesting. It's, uh, Feels a little bit more like street racing, if I'm honest. <laughs> Code 60, and from the number 11 Ferrari, we can see the MRS number 980 Porsche off track. It's a broken drive shaft. I enjoyed in the night, I had one stint. We, we were leading in class, but then the drive shafts went off, so we had to repair for an hour, yeah, and then the, the chance for a win was away. True Racing have traded in their crossbow GT4s for this race. They've got a pair of brand new KTM GTX for a shakedown in this race. We had some hiccups with the car 217 overnight. I guess we had a stone which got into the alternator belt and that caused a bit of issues for us, but otherwise the 216 is had absolutely no problems, no penalties, no issues. Well, touch wood, we're not done yet. Yellow flags are out for a collision. Drivers are hitting their brakes, but Matteo Malicelli not able to avoid all of the skirmish and has picked up some damage on the left front of his Ferrari. There was faster car slapping me and uh, there was one car who just distracted my attention uh, from the normal normal racing line and their uh, stop uh, braking points. So uh, I braked a little bit too late into the corner and uh, the faster, faster driver just closed uh, the gap in the corner, so uh, we crashed. We got hit by uh, TCR. Uh, quite hard. Uh, we managed to bring the car back. Uh, unfortunately, we, we were on the lead at that time and uh, we lost uh, 25 minutes in the pit, so we probably lost the win. The GSR Speed Factory number 105 Audi, too severely damaged to be repaired here at the track, so the team end their race. For most here, however, it's still a very enjoyable race. Well, I had two outings in the night and both have been very good for me. Good, um, good times. I got the good lap times and uh, also overtook the leading car, so that's a positive impact for me. Barcelona is a brilliant track. Um, I mean, it's the reason why it stays on the F1 and the MotoGP calendar every year. Our guys love it. Many of us on the fly out always talk about how it's one of our favorite ones on the calendar every year, and uh, Creventic always put on a good show here.
Six o'clock in the morning, the GT division hasn't changed much. Dennis Lind brings the car out of the night, leading by 19 seconds over Ralph Board in second position. That's the Barwell 77 and 91 Herbert Porsche battle. Jordan Groger is now in the number 24 GPX racing Porsche. He's trying to keep up with the leaders, but there's a gap of three laps now. In the TCE division, the 131 top car Cupra is in the pits. They've got three laps over the Porto number 135. They're second, uh, six laps back to the 102 Holmgard Volkswagen. Both of those second and third place cars due to pit stop in the next couple of minutes. The 24-hour series has several major sponsors. They make sure the series can offer the absolute best experience for the competing teams. One of these partners is Speedcom. It's a very familiar atmosphere. For this reason, we enjoy it. I mean, the, the paddock is a, a very nice atmosphere to be working in. We feel that we're part of Gravendic. We are a partner with them, so we're helping them as well to try and, of course, help our, grow our business at the same time. At each race, Speedcom can be found in the paddock. We are part of the communications uh, network. We give service to the teams, we sell the radios, we give servicing to the drivers with their helmets, with the race equipment and uh, radio equipment inside. Series organizers Kravendik appreciates all their sponsors. Hankook and Panther, very important for us. Um, even also the smaller uh, sponsors like Stand 21 and Speedcom, but especially actually this race, we have a new sponsor. It's uh, Webheads from one of, one of our drivers, uh, J.M. Littman. And yeah, we're very happy and also very proud that he chose this race and our series to promote his uh, company. It's a very friendly series. Gavent have been very good to us in the past. And it's nice to put something a little bit back into a series we really enjoy being part of anyway. But there's some great uh, people in this paddock. There's some great competitors and they have great businesses. And, you know, people spend a lot of money going to conferences and exhibitions. But I'd rather put my money here and be able to talk to some really interesting businessmen who also enjoy racing. So we share that connection and it's a really good opportunity to work with them in the future. For a driver, it's an extra bonus to see your brand on all your competitors' cars. Uh, a couple of people came up to me yesterday and go, how many cars are you driving here? And, uh, and I look at it when I get behind a car, I go, wow, we've got webheads on the back of the car and I have to think a double take. So yeah, we, we've got a promotional crew here today and we'll be going around and talking to all the teams during the 24 hours and you know, just trying to establish a connection and uh, you know, who knows what will lead on and hopefully we'll be working with some of these guys later on. So the lesson is, if you do it right, being a partner in the FIA sanctioned 24-hour International Endurance Series, be a great platform to promote your brand. A collision on track between the number 22 Vockenspiegel Ferrari and the CP Racing number 85 AMG. Darren Law is pulled out of the gravel. Leon Advice brings the Vockenspiegel Ferrari to the pit lane unassisted. Hands over to Hendrik Still. The number 112 Volkswagen of Autorama is having a steady race and team owner Stefan Tanner is enjoying being here. The series is uh, uh, very cool, good for the amateur drivers, also for factory drivers and for our uh, team. Now we go with two cars in, in this uh, series and uh, yeah, we look uh, in the future. Daylight returns to the track. I started when it was dark and then it was getting lighter and lighter. Uh, there are two turns where the sun is uh, shining directly to you. That was a little difficult, but uh, it was fine. The Red Horse team have a 12 second penalty to serve for speeding in the pit lane. Sven is ready at the penalty box, but the driver has a different idea. I think the driver was in a bad mood for the penalty, so he just uh, played a little trick on me. And he went for the gap and he went out again and he just said goodbye. The Synchro Honda Civic is back in the garage. Half an hour to change the gearbox, now engine overheating. As daylight broke, unfortunately we uh, had an engine issue and it resulted in us having to do an engine change as well. Uh, the engine change was 1 hour 15 minutes. Our guys are so well drilled at this, uh, we practice this a lot before we come out on every race weekend and a testament to them and their skill set, they are always are bang on it. Just a couple of hours to the finishing flag now, how has Barwell planned to handle their driver rotation? The amateur drivers have done quite a bit of driving at night, 
But now um, Patrick Vial is in for another little while and then um, Dennis hopefully goes in to finish the race. So it's pros to the end from us. But what about their rivals for the lead? I think they've got to run another 30 minutes of time for one of their their rams. You know, Bond and Alleman have driven in a fantastic race as well. So um, it's going to be very... All I can say is it's going to be close. TC lead still in the hands of top car number 131. Daniel Alleman first to complete 600 laps. Battle for the top step of the GT podium between the number 91 Porsche and the 77 Lamborghini. But other teams have their eye on the European Championship points. We are in, uh, on number six uh, in the overall and uh, I think number three in the class. And uh, I hope that with that result uh, we uh, really can keep our international position. Uh, in the A6 we are overall two. And uh, with the drivers, uh, we are at uh, two, and uh, so I hope that we can keep that. Synchro Honda 676 back on track with a new engine. Now let's see where the leaders stand. I'm old enough to remember when a 24-hour endurance race was often decided before you even reached the halfway point. The battle between Herbert Motorsports 91 Porsche and the Barwell Lamborghini number 77 has been going on for 21 hours now, and they've been swapping the lead backwards and forwards. In third, the GPX Racing number 24 Porsche, 12th position overall leading the TCR class and heading the TCE division is the top car number 131. They've got a seven lap advantage over the Paporo number 135. So if they can keep their nose clean over the last three hours or so, they should be able to take home the win. Third in the TCE division, by the way, is the 112 Autorama Volkswagen. This is endurance. Uh, well, endurance, I think, is, is teamwork, preparation, and a lot of luck. That's endurance. Uh, it's fascinating, 24 hours long, uh, good teamwork. Uh, this is the most important for a long distance race. With a lot of different cars in the individual classes, it means the series implements BOP. Yeah, the BOP or the, the balance of performance is very important because we have different cars in the same classes and just to make it equal, we have a balance of performance so that every car has a chance to, yeah, to get on the podium. You couldn't have this GT3 racing without, without a BOP. Then you'd have to have more detailed technical regulations and when you have technical regulations, then, then uh, it costs a lot of money. Listen, balance of performance is important because you can't put a different manufacturer against to a different manufacturer. They're always going to have pros and cons against them. Um, BOP, balance of performance, is in principle a very good idea, but you're never going to keep everyone happy. Whose job is it to set the BOP for each car? Yeah, it depends a little bit. Sometimes it's uh, the homologation of the car that depends the BOP, the balance of performance, but for some classes we make the BOP ourselves and we just check and look at all the information we have and then we uh, decide what the BOP will be. I think the BOP is pretty good. Um, the fight has really been close between us and the Porsche and the Ferrari. Um, but it comes down to small details in the pits and, uh, you know, this is what makes it exciting. Fourth overall, Herbert number 93 Porsche. But more importantly, they are leading the A6 Am category with a three lap gap. Edward Lewis Browner is asked to get ready for a pit stop coming slightly earlier than expected. I just learned that we had some contact, I don't know, apparently with a Ferrari. So we need to see if we need to repair something or if it's a straight pit stop. No damage to the car, so it was a straightforward pit stop. In TCE, the Autorama number 112 came into this race with a big lead in the European Championship standings. So what are their championship chances now? They're currently not leading the race. Uh, we will stay off place three and place uh, five. And in the championship, we hope we go to the first. It's a little bit uh, uh, nervous now. <laughs> Apart from hard, it's also very enjoyable, especially in a big field like this. We've had a battle with car 91 Porsche for the duration of the whole race. So starting from hour one to hour now. So for 22 hours, we've been swapping positions 
every stint. So it, it, it's, it, it's been one of the best battles I think I've, I've been a part of for the last, well, 14 years I've been in motorsport. We've had a few new cars at this event and most of them have done well up to now. We have two hours left to go, a little over two hours to go and to be honest it's, it's quite surprising how good it's been. We have no problems uh, at the race, only a few penalties of uh, speeding pit lane and um, one tyre breakdown at the beginning and that's everything fine. That's the first time we are doing this 24 with the new team, everybody's new so fantastic experience. Uh, I mean we've been challenged uh, the whole day yesterday with, uh, with the differential and one of the wheels came off in the night and uh, the car crashed into the barrier but the uh, great teamwork made it uh, run again so the car is doing good drama for the 188 audi the left front wheels come off radamaka has hit the barriers <laughs> it's a nightmare weekend huh? so we start the weekend with uh, a poor a poor stefan perez one of the, the driver who was hit by a car into the the pit and he's in the hospital for the moment it's okay, but he's in the hospital, so that was not a good start of the weekend. And afterward, the race was uh, many, many different mechanical issues on the car. And the last one is a broken wheel um, on the fast right corner at the middle of the track. And so I went on, on the gravel and hit the tire wall. We have to bring back the car on the track and we, the, the mechanics start to rebuild it and we will uh, do last lap or last two laps to finish the race for Stefan Perret. Bohemia Energy Ferrari number 11 is currently 10th overall. That would be their worst finishing position this year. In the whole of the 2019 season, they've always finished on the podium, but their competitors still think the Czech team are unbeatable. In the uh, A6 uh, overall, the GT title overall, I think the number 11 Ferrari had it pretty well sewn up coming in, even if they didn't finish this race. You know, with five wins coming in, it's hard to beat that. The TC outright leader for most of the race has been the 131 top car Cupra. The drivers have raced very well indeed. But you've got to give some credit too to the pit team who've had perfect stops. I think the team, uh, team has practiced the pit stops a lot. So yeah, for sure. In, uh, in first stint, we won uh, one minute to the other ones in a pit stop, so it's a lot. Triple for the 102 Holmgard Volkswagen. They were fourth in class, now in the gravel. When when, uh, when Roy from Norway hit um, the brakes, uh, it went to the bottom, and then he, he heard a, a big smack, and that was the, um, the brake disc that exploded. It looks like the GT victory will be decided on pit stops. We've got to take on less fuel at the next stop than they have. We're about a minute uh, behind them, so it's going to put us right back within a couple of seconds again. And then it's going to come down to the last hour of fighting. It'd be like a sprint race, so who knows? Now, while we've been concentrating on the top two cars in the overall standings, let's not forget the number 24 GPX Racing Porsche. It's been in third position in the GT division for most of the race. Yeah, it's uh, fingers crossed. I mean, we are currently on P3. Our aim was the podium, uh, which currently looks good for us, but fingers crossed because even in the last half an hour, a lot can happen. Another car flying under the radar doing very well, this time in the TCE division, is the local team Baporo with their 135 Cupra. They're in second with a four lap gap back to third. For us, uh, as a local team, we know very good uh, the race of Barcelona, but especially when Preventic arrived with the uh, 24 hour series increased a lot. The feel and with the GTs, it's amazing because we have the maximum class uh, GT3 cars and the maximum cars in TCR class, and it's fantastic. In the final minutes of the race, the pit stop strategy has worked perfectly for the British team of Barwell Motorsport. They're on their way to an historic win here in Barcelona. The Hurricane GT3 is won in, in uh, America, it's won Daytona. We've won at Spa in the Silver class and in the AM class. Uh, I don't think that uh, the Hurricane has won in Europe 
overall. So, um, yeah, that's a, that's one we're chasing, I guess. 24 hours completed, and the 77 Barwa Lamborghini crosses the line first in GT. Just behind the top car number 131 wins the TCE division. After 24 hours, only 10 seconds between the first two in the GT division. Excitement right to the last lap. Uh, this team did a flawless job. We had our issues. But uh, we pulled it off in the end. It's been a very, very tough race, long, hot. Yeah, I'm just, I'm happy it's over and I'm happy we ended where we ended. I gave my best, but in the end it was not enough for Mr. Lind, who was faster than me. And so, but we had a good day, we had a good race and uh, we had a good experience. So thank you to Barcelona. At the top of the TCE division, not a 10 second gap, but 10 laps. Top car were sure of their win from a little earlier on. Yeah. Only thing what could happen was a technical failure, which is unlikely. But poor Ortic, second in TCE. Yeah, yeah, I'm really happy. <laughs> it's the hardest thing, very strong, but uh, go to finish is well. But that position was in danger at the end of the race. They said me push, 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 number two got the problem. Oh, the tires, oh, almost done. But I tried as hard as I can. And otherwise, it wasn't possible to catch number two. But congrats to the whole team. They did an amazing job with two cars. It was hard. Whilst we were racing here in Barcelona, a tragic accident in the Formula 2 race in Spa hit hard to the whole motorsport community. We tried to get the win for Anton Hubert. We didn't. We pushed as hard as we could, but we'd like to dedicate this to him uh, today. Um, I know it's only third, mate, but, you know, we tried. The organisation decided to forego the champagne showers in respect of 22-year-old Antoine Hubert, who lost his life at Spa Francorchamps on Saturday of our race weekend. The margin of victory, 10 seconds, and Barwell Motorsport takes home the big trophy with their Lamborghini number 77. Second is that Herbert team with their number 91 Porsche. The third podium position goes to GPX Racing, another Porsche, the number 24 car. In TCE, the Cupra 131 from Top Car Racing did have a comfortable lead for pretty much the whole of the race. Second, Paporo Cupra number 135, the local team, and third, the VW from the Autorama team, the 112. And the class winners, the Barwell 77 Lamborghini takes home the trophy in the A6 Pro class. Herbert 93 Porsche claims the victory in A6 Am. SPX class winners here in Barcelona for the new KTM GTX, the 216 team of True Racing 991 Cup class. Speed lover number 978 fight through their difficulties and take the top step. In GT4, Orchid Racing are the winners with their number 415. In the TCE division, the number 131 Top Car Cupra wins the TCR class. KTM Crossbow number 224 of RTR Projects wins SP3. And in A3, it's Hoffa Racing by Bonk Motorsport that takes home the number one trophy. And let's not forget the winners of the eSport 24 Hours of Barcelona, Team MSI eSports. It was very a very interesting experience and very good. We lead all the race from the beginning. We, did, we got pole and it was very good, yeah. The Barcelona event concludes the European Championship, so a second award ceremony in the hospitality unit after the race. The season champions in GT, Bohemia Energy Ferrari, number 11. A one-point lead at the end of the season gives them the championship over Herbeth, number 93, team second, three points ahead of their teammates from Herbeth in the 91 team. In the TC division, it's the Autorama number 112 team. They've been successful for most of the year. A 14-point lead clinches them the European Championship from Synchro Honda number 676 in second. And the AC Motorsport number 188 Audi team finish the European Championship in third. In the Driver Championship, the results are a success for the number 11 Bohemia Energy team as Matteo Malicelli, Yuri Pesadic and Josef Kral take home the trophy for best drivers. Edward Lewis Browner from a Herbeth number 93 takes second driver points and the Herbeth number 91 drivers of Daniel Alleman, Ralph Bourne and Robert Renard are third on the podium for GT Drivers Division. In the TC Division, the 2019 European Driver Champion is Fabian Danst. He raced 
to deal with Top Car, but earlier this season he was with Old Rama. Dan Wheeler and Alan James from Synchro Honda, second in the championship. James Kate and Stefan Perrin take third this season, even though Stefan currently in hospital uh, due to an accident in night practice when he was knocked over in the pit lane. We wish him well. Here are the standings in the classes. So this was the last race of the European leg of the 24-hour series powered by Hankook, but not the end of our season, because this race, along with the Hankook 24 hours of Dubai and the Hankook 24 hours of Portimao, as part of the continent standings. And in November, in quarter at Austin, Texas, we know who'll win those trophies. And if you're a true endurance lover, don't forget the Spa 500 in October. That's a TCR only race. All the information that you need is on 24hseries.com.